Issue 18. So I guess in the Fleetway comic, Zone quite literally means region of the planet, not just alternate dimensions, since it's said that every zone on planet Mobius has been touched by Eggman. But it's just confusing because we also hear about the special zone and the nameless zone, which are alternate dimensions. On Casino Night Zone, after Mobius complains about what he lost gambling, Sonic tells him to come over to him, and it's lampshaded how reckless he's being since he doesn't have his disguise on. Sonic then reveals that Eggman not only has all the games in Casino Night rigged, but he also hypnotizes all the visitors into being compulsive gamblers, to the point where this guy lost his home. That makes sense. Sonic then says that the computer that controls this place is in the head of the statue. How does he know that? And Porker says the eyes are shooting out hypno beans. Are they just assuming this because the statue is the most important and iconic part of the zone? Eggman says that a spy of his told him Sonic's coming here, and he threatens what's apparently this comic's version of Mario and Luigi into going back to their terrible version of Mario World. I didn't even know they were parodies of Mario and Luigi at first, I thought they were Spanish instead because of their names. Porker wanted his disruptor gizmo to fix the central computer. One, I guess Sonic means break the computer, or that help Eggman. And two, since Parker has a gizmo, that must mean he's the discount Rotor. Well, I honestly like him better than Rotor. At least because he's got an actual personality. He's a coward. Even if he has a more generic design, it's at least got clothes now and he's taller, so I can accept him as an actual character now instead of just a talking animal from a badnik. He looks more huggable than Rotor, who just looks like a comedy relief character. Porker says that they're gonna have to get closer, being worried, and Sonic says he's going to get closer with the device. One of the Marxio brothers pushes a button and Sonic gets fired on by robots, and Sonic surprisingly acknowledges the risk that one of the robots could get a lucky shot on him eventually. That's humble, like he has some humble moments in this comic a lot. They tell him to stay put, surrounding him with weapons, and he falls into a hole. This leads him to get bounced around by pinball flippers and somehow narrowly avoid a spike trap before making it for some reason. For some reason, Porker specifically was kidnapped by the Marxio brothers and the third guy who was there for some reason. Not sure who he's supposed to represent. Sonic lampshades that all Porker had to do was stay out of sight and he couldn't even do that. He apologizes, stuttering, and the story ends with them tied together to a train track with a train bearing down on them. In the next story, we see a tall pagoda in the Nameless Zone that Mobians believe only exists in legend, and for the added effect of being a magical place, it has an orange sky and green mountains. It was red before, I guess it depends on the time of day. We see the grey fox Mobian and the other fox using magic from their hands to create the portal for Tails, and he's told that the Enchanter Kings need him. His battle armor that makes him lighter forms around him by itself, and for some weird reason he complains about how he's not called Tails. This feels forced because you'd think he would take offense to that name, and they don't explain that they just don't want to sound like they're making fun of his second tail. If his second tail is a mutation from having so much magic in him, which would justify why they have such respect for him, then you'd think they'd want to call him Tails even more for that. Tails is told to rescue the third Enchanter King. He says that they're the last of the Enchanters because that king vanished years ago, and then he says for the sake of the audience that he remembers from when he was still in that zone. Seriously, why did he ever leave that place? Why isn't he still with his family? This will never be explained. That king, Shirob, vanished just before the evil Tross came to their zone, which Tails defeated and got banished to the land beyond in handcuffs. They used to think Tross had killed Shirob until his face appeared in the Magic Crystal communication faintly. Why didn't it appear earlier? It's explained that Shirob was merely taken prisoner by Tross in the land beyond. Fortunately for Tails, he'll be accompanied by their bravest fox warrior who has studied all the known texts of the land beyond. I'm surprised that they let him be accompanied by anyone at all since they have such faith in the champion of Mobius. So rather than Tails getting to be useful, which would be an appeal to having a, set a Tails-centered story, all of the work will be done by some guy we don't care about. Tails wonders if they'd have to defeat their champion to enter the land beyond since he fought Tross once, and he's told that's just the Enchanter King's spell to protect them. And they go to the land beyond, which looks like a depressing rocky wasteland where no plant should grow, and so it should be totally unlivable, and they get surrounded by monsters like Tross, one of whom has bat-like wings. 
Too bad it cuts off right at the good part. The first story was by Nigel Kitchen. In a Sonic and Porker infiltrate casino night where people are being hypnotized to be compulsive gamblers by Eggman's statue. So why can't he just hypnotize everyone to love him and be obedient then? Anyways, they tried to use a device against the computer that Porker made. This is where it's revealed that Porker is a discount rotor. And again, I think I might prefer him to rotor because he's got a personality, being a coward. Even if that trait just makes him like Porky Pig without a stutter, so it's not like he's original. But he's got a decent jacket, so alright then. I wonder if he's wearing that jacket to look tough to compensate for the fact that he isn't tough at all in the slightest. The story ends with Porker being inexplicably kidnapped when he really should have been better at staying out of sight. And he and Sonic are tied to the railroad tracks that were apparently near Casino Night Zone all along in this universe. It was interesting. And the second story was by Nigel Ketching, and explains that Tails was summoned to the Nameless Zone to go rescue the third Enchanter King that was held captive by the evil Tross, who wasn't executed for some reason. And fortunately for Tails, he's got a warrior as an escort this time around. So I'm sure all the work will be done by him instead of letting Tails be a badass for once. I do love seeing the Nameless Zone's lore get developed. I really do like this place with its pretty coloring scheme. But that warrior looks too much like Tails with his face, and yet I'm expected to believe he's not related to them at all. So this zone seems to have the Pender's Echidna problem, where the, the foxes tend to look too much like Tails. And at least with Pender's, he would have the Echidna sometimes be totally different colors.